throughout 1945, it was becoming clear to Japanese army officials that an Allied invasion of the Japanese mainland was growing ever more likely. Seeing as their navy and air force had been mostly destroyed, they needed new weapons to fight off a probable Allied attack on Japan. Among these new weapons were kamikaze aircraft, with many older designs having already been used in this role. However, some kamikaze aircraft were to be specially designed for such a role, being cheap and able to be built quickly and in great numbers. One such aircraft was the Ki-115 Suruki Sabre, which was built in small numbers and never used operationally. Welcome to another Plain Encyclopedia Voiced article. I'm your host, Tony, and today I'll be covering the Nakajima Ki-115. If you like what we do, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Following the extensive loss of men, material, and territory during the fighting in the Pacific, the Japanese army and navy were in a precarious situation, especially as there was a great possibility of an allied invasion of their homeland. Unfortunately for them, the Japanese fighting forces on the ground, in the air, and on the sea were mostly mere shadows of their former selves and unable to prevent the rapid allied advance across the Pacific. This was especially noticeable after the costly Japanese naval defeat during the Battle of Leyte Gulf in October 1944 and later Battle of Okinawa, which ended in July 1945. The desperation, or better said fanatical refusal to accept that the war was lost, led to the development and use of kamikaze, divine wind, tactics. This name was taken from Japanese history. The term arose from the two typhoons that completely destroyed the Mongol invasion fleet. Essentially, the kamikaze were Japanese pilots that used their own explosive-laden aircraft as weapons and sought to crash into important targets such as Allied warships. This term also entered widespread use to designate all Japanese suicide craft used in this way. During the war, these tactics managed to sink over 30 Allied ships and damage many more. The suicide attacks were mostly carried out using any existing aircraft that was operational, including older trainers and obsolete aircraft. Kamikaze are a subject with a great deal of nuance and can be difficult to understand through a conventional lens. However, supplies of this aircraft would inevitably become limited and their previous usage meant fewer would be serviceable compared to newer, more expensive models. Thus, the Japanese army wanted a specially designed kamikaze aircraft that could be produced in great numbers. This aircraft needed to have a simple construction and use a little of dwindling material stockpiles as possible. On 20th January 1945, the Japanese army contacted the Nakajima aircraft manufacturer with instruction to design and build such an aircraft. The basic requirements included a bomb load up to 800 kilograms. It had to be able to be powered by any available radial engine in the range of 800 horsepower to 1300 horsepower. The maximum speed desired was 515 kilometers per hour. Construction and design had to be as simple as possible. They also wished to speed up the whole development and production process and also to reduce the need for skilled labor. It was especially emphasized that the undercarriage had to be jettisonable, not retractable. It was not expected for the aircraft to fly back, so a retractable landing gear was not needed, and this would make the production and design process somewhat quicker. The job of designing this aircraft was given to engineer Aori Kunihiro. He was supported by engineers from Ota Manufacturing and the Mitaka Research Institute. While Nakajima received the contract in January 1945, it only took two months to complete the first prototype. In March 1945, this prototype was presented to the Japanese army and then put through a series of tests. Almost immediately, a series of faults with the designs were noted. This was not surprising given that the whole design process lasted only two months. During running on the ground, the fixed and crude undercarriage was difficult to control. The pilot's poor frontal visibility further complicated matters. This was unacceptable even for skilled pilots, while less experienced pilots would have had great difficulty in successfully operating it on the ground. The army rejected the prototype and requested a number of modifications to be done. The Ki-115 was designed as a low-wing mixed construction suicide attack aircraft. The front fuselage containing the engine compartment and the central part was built using steel panels. The engine compartment was held in place by four bolts 
and was specially designed to house several different potential engines. Eventually, the Japanese chose the 1,130 horsepower Nakajima HA35 14-cylinder radial piston engine. It had a fixed-pitch three-blade propeller. In order to help reach its target quicker, two small auxiliary rocket engines were placed under each wing. The wings were built using all-metal construction with stressed skin. The rear tail unit was built using wood and was covered by the fabric. The cockpit was placed in the upper center of the fuselage. It was semi-open with the front windshield. As requested, the Ki-115 prototype had a fixed and jettisonable undercarriage. It had a very simple design, using simple metal tubes with no shock absorbers. While two wheels were used in the front, a tail skid was used at the rear. The fixed undercarriage tested on the prototype proved to be highly ineffective. All later produced aircraft were instead equipped with a simple and easy-to-build shock absorber. The armament consisted of a bomb load of up to 800 kilograms. This included using either a single 250 kilograms, 500 kilograms, or 800 kilograms bomb. The bomb was not to be dropped on the enemy, but instead be detonated once the aircraft hit its target. Besides the bomb, no other armament was to be provided on the Ki-115. Once the prototype was back in Mitaka Kenkyujo, the engineers began working on improving its performance. The redesigned undercarriage, which incorporated a simple shock absorber, was completed by June 1945, by which time a series of test flights were done. By August 1945, some 104 Ki-115 aircraft were ready. Two Ki-115 were given to Hikoki KK, where the Japanese Navy Air Force was developing its own suicide attack aircraft. By the war's end, none of the Ki-115 built would be used in combat. The Ki-115 planes were later captured by the Allies and nearly all were scrapped. Surprisingly, two Ki-115s have survived to this day. One can be seen at the Pima Air and Space Museum. This aircraft is actually on loan from the National Air and Space Museum. The second aircraft is currently located in Japan. Not wanting to potentially damage these aircrafts, no restoration attempts are planned for the near future. In order to further improve the aircraft's performance and reduce costs, the Ki-115B version was proposed. This included replacing the all-metal wings with ones built of wood. These new wings were larger and had to be equipped with flaps. To provide the pilot with a better view, his cockpit was moved to the front. Due to the end of the war, nothing came from this proposal. The Ki-115 was built in small numbers only, with some 104 production planes plus the prototype. These were built by the two Nakajima production centers at Iwate 22 aircraft and Ota 82 aircraft. The production lasted from March to August 1945. Luckily for the Japanese pilots, the Ki-115 was never used operationally. It was a simple and crude design which was born out of desperation. If the Ki-115 was ever used in combat, it would have likely presented an easy target for enemy fighters and suffered from poor reliability due to its cheap construction. This concludes our look at the Nakajima Ki-115. If you like what we do and want to see more, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Also, don't forget to take a look at our extensive collections of articles on our website, plane-encyclopedia.com. Thank you.